Okay, here's what's up. A beautiful opportunity. A beautiful opportunity just came to me. I met a parent on the street. And that parent had a deep concern. Okay, my son, my four-year-old son just looked at porno for the first time. And now my daughter, who's like two or three, now she's making comments. What do I do? What do I do? All right, this is really serious. This is right at the, the, the touch, the heat of the issue. All right, number one, know and be solid on all things. Practice talking about the realities of life. They did not do this for me. I'm telling you, my parents didn't do it. My teachers, my pastors, nobody did it for me. I am starting brand new. This is a brand new family tree right here. You're hearing from me. Okay, number one, the areas that my parents and teachers and pastors were de deficient. First of all, Yahweh bless you forever. First of all are these. They were deficient. They did not teach me as a child that the proofs that Jesus is God. We have an invisible helper. Uh, actually, yeah, that's right. As I was... Uh, um, as I was speaking out, as I was speaking this out, God is really an invisible person who made us He really designed us everything, skin color, eye color, shape, and size. Okay, so for a little child, your confidence, your confidence that God is real has got to be displayed to them. So in some ways, you need to make God real to you, but you need to communicate with them with confidence. God is an invisible person who made us. He really designed us. Everything, skin color, eye color, our shape, our size, and the family that we were born into. Sometimes we get born into families that are really weird and strange and have a lot of problems. And that's okay. God knows that. God is really an invisible person that's bigger than all existence. He's bigger than all the universes. Okay. My parents did not give me the proofs that Jesus is God. One, two, three. Hundreds of fulfilled predictions. A bunch of people saw him alive after he was publicly ex ex executed. And the coolest thing is he walked into town. And he healed the whole hospital. Everybody in town was healed. And he drove the spirits off that caused mental illness, behavioral problems, personality disorders. He drove personality disorder spirits off. The proofs that Jesus is God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit is our invisible helper. Jesus has sent the invisible helper, the Holy Spirit. That's number one. Number two, the mechanics of the spirit realm. There's five different types of spirits. Number one is God. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God in three forms. The supreme one that's never been seen, the visible one, the Jesus one, and the invisible one, the Holy Spirit, who has come to us from the Father and the Son. Okay, that's number one spirit. Number two is helper spirits. An uncountable number of helper spirits have been made, angels of light. And then one third of them fell and turned into destroyer tricker spirits. But we still have two thirds of an uncountable number, which is still an uncountable number. There's more angels of light than there are troubling spirits, right? And so, so you've got God, you've got the angels of light, the angels of darkness, then you've got a human being that's alive in their body and then human beings 
whose bodies are no longer alive, but they're still alive. And they're going to rise up out of the ground when Jesus comes back. And there's going to be an evaluation and judgment for everybody and everything we did in our whole life. So five different types of spirits. Number one, you want to have the Holy Spirit. So you've got God inside of you, just like Jesus, the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. That is God inside of you. And then you have little helper spirits around you that are doing many things, little or big. They're actually big when you get to see them because they're so amazing. They don't have bodies and they last forever. They don't die. They watch over your grandparents and your parents and you and your kids and your kids' kids. And the bad spirits try to camp out on the family lineages and stay in there and do nasty things like being angry or sneaky things. And a lot of those things get hidden. So the mechanics of the spirit realm were not de delivered to me. You've got to deliver these things. You've got to say, God is really an invisible person who made us. We really love God. God is so beautiful. He made the flowers. He made my skin, my little fingers that can touch and hold a baby. He made my lips that can kiss the baby and kiss my loved one. The mechanics of the spirit realm. Gender teaching, stations in life. Galatians 3.28. Now in Christ there is no longer any supremacy to male or female or rich or poor or spiritually trained or spiritually untrained or Jew or Gentile. We are all equal souls, but then we have stations in life and the stations in life teaching, the teaching in the gospel about how men are to behave and how women are to behave is really intense and people don't want to look at it. People want, don't want to say, a woman is more easily deceived, but she's full of prophetic word, so she needs to be heard, and the man needs to hear the voice of God to guide the family. The man sets the spirit tone for the family and the workplace and the tribe that he is, you know, he is the overseer, the boss of. There is a beautiful lineage. God, Father, is the boss of Jesus. Jesus is the boss of the man. The man is the boss of the woman. The man and the woman are the boss of the children. And that doesn't mean nasty boss. That means wonderful, loving kindness that gives the best benefits. If you don't go to your parents and say, hey, I'm thinking of doing this thing and that thing. What do you think I should do? If you don't get advice from the ones that are wiser than you, that have more strength than you, then you're putting yourself in trouble. Many people have been abused. Many people are insecure and full of mistrust. So they don't allow themselves to be led. They isolate themselves and they basically run everything themselves and they don't really allow themselves to be led. Okay. And then number four, all human pleasures can get dangerous. Okay. Anything, anything can get dangerous. Watching cooking shows can get obsessive. You're constantly watching cooking shows and you're not paying attention to your business. Uh, hanging out with your friends and just goofing around and doing things. That can become an obsession and addiction and draw you away from more excellent things. In Mark 4, verse 19, it talks about the weeds. The weeds. In the parable of the sower, there's four types of seeds. Two types die and two types stay alive. The two types that die are the one that falls on the hard heart. Hard heart doesn't even want to hear nothing of God. The rocky heart, the heart where there's a bunch of offenses towards the ways of the gospel and the teaching of the gospel. It's like, oh, wow, Jesus is God. This is really cool. I'm really into this. What? Um, I can't do that and still love Jesus. Oh, forget it. I, I'm, you know, and because of testing or challenging or calling onto the narrow path, they die. They die spiritually. Okay? But then there's two that stay alive. The seed that falls in the weeds actually grows up and it stays alive, but it produces no fruit. It produces no fruit. It stays alive. And then the one that, that falls on the sweet hearts, the open hearts, produces an amazing, amazing crop of new seeds. So the one that falls on the weeds is very important. Number three, Mark 4.19, the three weeds are stated. Fears about the future, 
a focus on money and material things. Oh, I don't have enough for that. I don't have enough time for that. We can't do this. We this it's faith is risk. Faith is actually risking things. Fears about the future, a focus on money and material things, and a chasing after what is pleasant instead of what is excellent and really lasting. Okay? All human pleasures can get dangerous. Do you know that we're called to be an open-hearted communion group in a home? And that open-hearted communion group is called to send people out on the street every day, loving on people and doing miracles. And that, that group is called to bring orphans in and raise up children that have been ditched out of good parenting. We can do all kinds of pleasant religious behavior, but if we're not doing some of those most basic things, James 1, 26, 27, this is true religion. This is good spiritual habits that God considers wonderful. Watch your mouth. Don't speak faithlessly. Don't put more trust in doctors than you do in your prayers in God. Watch your mouth. Not just like don't have a, you know, a potty mouth. Watch what you say and how you lead people because you can abuse people by your words. Watch your mouth. It is a deadly tool. Number one is watch your mouth. Number two is care for children who have been ditched out of family. Number three is care for women who have been ditched out of sweet male protection and headship. In the Garden of Eden, no woman was ever going to have to be forced to be a solo satellite and operate on her own and just do everything on her own. No female human being was going to be pushed out on her own, but rather she was going to be surrounded by love and sheltering. One of the hard, most horrible things in the whole world is the fact that women have to spend their whole lives pushing men away who are interested in having them and being intimate with them. Just that work, that training of pushing away men causes women to be a certain isolated character. So, dasiraka alama, tangent, 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 tangent. So, fears about the future focus on material things and money and a chasing after what is pleasant or that rather than what is excellent what is excellent watch your mouth care for ditched children care for women who have been ditched and don't imitate the bad behavior of the people around you we are in american culture and we are lazy and we are selfish and we're we're basically raised by advertising we're raised by advertising money we can't get out of it don't hate the culture. Don't hate yourselves. I mean, but hate the world. The fact is that we have been nurtured by extremely selfish programming, brainwashing, advertising. Okay? All of your human pleasures can get dangerous. Obviously, of course, also arousal and sexual desire and those kinds of things. But also the human pleasures of making money and being successful can get dangerous. Uh you know, traveling around and having many experiences can get dangerous. You know, right when you want to go on your trip to Thailand, your sister has a big problem. And actually, God wants you to quit your trip to Thailand and be with your sister and her family, but you don't feel like it. You know, choosing the excellent thing rather than the pleasant thing. So these are the things that my parents did not teach me over and over again. Okay, I needed these things so badly, and I share them with you. Now, the next thing is, my child has just watched porno, what do I do? Okay, well you have to be cheerful and playful and fun about how we're made. Hopefully you're a married couple that are content, hopefully you have sex singing and shouting and praying in the Holy Spirit and hopefully even when you're being intimate, you're praying for the single people who are sad and lonely and we're, you're praying for other marriages that they might be whole and complete. But as far as the kids go, as far as I'm concerned, you go straight to Genesis 2.25. And they were naked and not ashamed. Okay, look, notice the little baby kid, how he runs around. Baby kid runs around. What did Satan say to Eve? You will not surely die. But there's three types of death. There's the death of innocence. There's the death of the physical human body, and there's the eternal death that lasts forever that is remorse and total separation from God and total sadness and no more goodness at all, which is absolutely terrifying. 
okay? Death of his innocence was the first thing that happened to Adam and Eve. And when we look at a child, we see their innocent nature, but we also see that there's spirits attached to them that cause them to be selfish, that cause to be, them to be bitter, that cause to, them to be insubordinate. And that is where we need to learn how to make the child say no to selfishness, bitterness, insubordination, and get in the sweet line of authority. And I pray right now that every single parent watching this and every single person, because you're parent to many constituents, I pray that you see and understand that you need to call people into that beautiful lineage of authority that gives you freedom and allows you to sleep at night. When you don't have to be the boss, you don't have to be in control. The whole picture of following, being with a true apostle and just living a life where you're putting together the communion groups together or with a true shepherd who's settled in a local place, a real grandfather heart that's settled in a local place that's, that's questing for, you know, the things that we should be all doing together before we make any worldly accomplishments. If you look at that video called what the early Christians believed about separation from the world. Grab a pen, write it down. What the early Christians believed about separation from the world. YouTube. You can also look up my playlist. Early Christian practice and lifestyle. Or life, early Christian lifestyle and practice. I made a YouTube playlist of scroll publishing stuff. And each one of them is an hour-long teaching. And it's amazing. Okay, you have free, easy access to information and you've been brainwashed by peer group insanity. You've been brainwashed by a really weak way of living life. Okay, so early Christian lifestyle and practice playlist and what the early Christians believed about separation from the world. Beautiful teachings, really inspiring, interesting, fascinating, not controlling, not nasty, not negative. Okay, so back to the child. The child has just watched porno. Read Genesis 2.25, and they were naked and not ashamed. Hey, you know what? The Garden of Eden is really, really real, and nobody had any clothes, and everybody could do anything without any shame. That means a man and a woman could enjoy one another without any shame. When you go out in the field and you see the, uh, the horses or the cows or the doggies making babies and, and, uh, and fitting together like a puzzle, you see that they are not ashamed. They just go about their, their business because that's part of their life. But since the fall, since Satan tricked us and our mommy and daddy got tricked by a spirit, the whole reality of life is this. Meditate on the Garden of Eden over and over and over again. What if there was no shame? What if there was no divorce? What if there was no, not even a desire, the ability to have a desire for a person that's not your person? Oh my gosh, that would be so wonderful. What if there were no pain and hatred, no problems, no killing? Oh my gosh, that was what the Garden of Eden plan was for us. That's God's original design for this form, for our body forms, is naked and not ashamed. Okay, so, and we think about the Garden of Eden because it helps us love God more. God is really an invisible person who made us. He really designed us. Everything, skin color, eye color, shape and size, and all the characteristics of our body. He made them for the Garden of Eden. Now, a new thing is coming up, and that is the eternal heaven. The eternal heaven is not opened yet. It will be opened when Jesus comes back. Right now, everybody's dwelling in the dwelling, in the, in the, uh, the dwelling place of the souls. People are separated to Abraham's bosom where they're prepared for Jesus coming back or people are separated to the place of torment knowing that their end is going to be in the lake of burning sulfur. And that's just uh, if you look up what the early Christians believed about life after death, you will learn some awesome stuff. So, so uh, all these things need to be under your belt. You don't need to describe all these details to your children over and over all at once 
But if you're in love with the Holy Spirit and in love with one another as parents, and if you have these details just under your belt, you can pop out little details of these things as the kids ask their questions. Now, here's the fun, playful thing. Okay, we draw a picture. You can do this for your kids. We draw a picture of mommy and daddy. Okay, there's mommy and daddy. That's mommy and daddy. And that's all of the things that they have that are the same. They, all, they both have two eyes, so we got four eyes in the family. They've each got one mouth. They each got one nose. They got two hands and two hands, so that's four hands, and two feet and two feet, so that's four feet. But also, they have different things, and mommy and daddy fits together like a puzzle. In the Hebrew culture, mommy is called Isha, and daddy is called Ish. Now, what do you think that means? Ish and Isha. Ish means the one with a point. That's a point. Ish means the one with a point. And Isha means the one with the hole. The pointed and the pierced. The pointed and the pierced, ish and isha. So when you go around as a little Hebrew kid, when your, your parents or teachers say, okay, all the ish over here, all the boys. But it's funny because they're using, they're using the actual name of your reproductive part to bring you together. Okay, all the ones with a hole over here and all the ones with a point over there. It's no big deal. It's a constant reality. It's no big deal. It's a constant reality. And Ish and Isha fit together like a puzzle. And the reason why you're looking at porno is this part on the man feels really, really good. And this part on the woman feels really, really good. It feels wonderful. And that is actually what draws the man and the woman together to be a marriage but we always say this sharing arousal or excitement body excitement without covenant Marriage is hurting you it's reducing your human potential Because you are called to be a mommy and a daddy with somebody. And you don't want to have a whole lot of excitement and sharing of arousal with anybody. You want to put that off and wait until it's time for you to have your person. Now, in most cultures in the world, people are allowed to choose their person from between 13 and 16 years old. And I read a recent report about life in America in the 1700s. And in the 1700s, you were a man, a boy, was expected to have a trade and a wife at about 16 years old. That means all peoples were connected with their person, connected together. All people were connected together by around 16 years old with a good trade. Oh, now, we also forgot the cool thing about Isha is Isha also has the mommy milk and the beautiful breasts that are really pretty to look at. The, Ish, the Ish, Isha has the mommy milk 
and the Isha body, this body has the fountain of babies. Many, many, many babies come out. And then this body catches the babies and allows the baby to become alive inside and then come out through Isha, through the hole, and then drink the milk. This is just a wonderful part of life. And that happens later on. You're a child. You don't want to you don't want to kiss somebody or or uh, or or fit together like a puzzle with somebody. And I want to underscore the fact that I'm going to put in the description a video that talks about how you are very wise to open communication about all details of sexual behavior and desire open to communication, practiced, ready for communication at the earliest age because it does not induce behavior. It doesn't, it doesn't make the child want to begin to, to fit together like a puzzle with the other type. It does not make them want to do that. It makes them a little bit curious and quiet. They're, they're processing. But if you give it to them early from your place, the place of love, they will not get screwed up information and get caught into naughty mindset and naughty behavior and start playing around and fooling around. And if you're being really the church and you're having honesty times, you know, the mommy and daddy is, are even going to be admitting to the times when they just, you know, are bad in their hearts. You know, I have anger towards somebody. I had a lust moment towards somebody. And, you know, we're not even going to be afraid of admitting that. It was probably just a bad spirit that jumped on me because I love my family and my spouse. Okay, so being ready with all these things is important. In the descriptions, please look for this video that's very fine about a person who is extremely studious and studied about talking to children in the earliest youth and how it is not a problem. It does not lead to negative sex behavior, but actually it brings the children to you when something happens. How, what, if, what if you say, say to your children, when you feel that your, your ish, your penis is feeling excited, or when you feel that your vulva is being excited, tell us and tell us what it feels like. Because we, we know what it feels like a whole lot. It feels really, really good. And we can say, thank you, God, for that good feeling. But we don't have to do anything with it, and we don't have to go share it with someone else. Share it with mommy and daddy. Let us know what's going on. Let us know how you feel, and we will help God help you. God is your friend. He will talk to you. Ask God to talk to you about everything, because mommy and daddy cannot always be there. If you're in an emergency situation, inside you can scream silently inside help me help me help me help me god i love you you're my invisible friend help me holy spirit you're in my invisible friend what should i do and the holy spirit can say run across the street and knock on that house that has the yellow door and you knock on the yellow door and there's somebody right there prepared to help you mommy and daddy are not perfect only jesus is perfect mommy and daddy have problems and mommy and daddy cannot be there all the time so when an emergency happened, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. And if an unusual or interesting or wonderful thing happens, share it with mommy and daddy because we can help you handle every situation. And the body situation is very, very interesting. So I hope that some of this helps you. I, I felt like, um, you know, when this, when, this, uh, when this precious parent said, listen, my son, four years old, just looked at porno for the first time and I'm just dealing with that. And now my two-year-old, two, three-year-old is also now talking about this stuff and I don't know how to start working with it. And so this is a, a basic overview and watch that video. Also, I have, I have uh, put together a playlist of, um, it's kind of like uh, marriage and sex truths. The, uh, 
the presentations in that playlist, some of them have nothing to do with God whatsoever. And some of them actually, from the worldly sense, make a really good presentation about honesty and reality and what life is really like and how our children are being literally trained by porno and we've got to take over control of their minds. We actually have to be the loving, caring ones that give them a better picture than porno. And, uh, and other things, other of the videos are literally like what the world is doing. You know, people who are talking so lovingly about swinging and sharing partners and, you know, all kinds of intimacy and stuff. This is the stuff that your children have access to and they will be learning from. So they need to actually learn from you. And in Colossians 2, it says, you know, beware of making so many rules and regulations because do not taste, do not touch seems to have a religious appearance, but it actually does not motivate and inspire you toward excellent behavior. It's just more rules that you have to follow. So, so if you say to the kids, don't watch this and don't watch that, and don't look at that, this, actually say to them, you know why we go to the zoo? We go to the zoo to look at beautiful little animals of all different kinds. So looking at naked bodies is something that's really really interesting because usually we're all covered up so it's it's natural for you to want to look at naked bodies and people being excited together but if you do that you are opening doors to bad spirits that can start messing with your mind and causing you to go against god who is your invisible helper Bad spirits actually want your mind to go in a direction that's dangerous for you so that you're hurting yourself. So if you open up porno and lots of pictures of naked people, you are actually going to begin getting yourself into trouble, invisible trouble that you don't want to have. If you want to have a person that you love in the future, like mommy and daddy love each other, then you have got to be very careful about not sharing arousal with other people. You can have, you know, a little bit of excitement to yourself, but if you share your arousal with other people, or if you look at pictures of naked people, you're bringing trouble on yourself and you don't want to do that. And mommy and daddy really, really enjoy their times of fitting together like a puzzle and having both of us excited because these two parts just match up perfectly. They match up perfectly. And, they, and of all of the mammal world, only human beings can go face to face and eye to eye and singing together in the Holy Spirit. All the other mammal world, when they come together, they come together from behind and they can't see one another's eyes. And that's part of God's proof that we are special above everything else. Remember in the Garden of Eden, Jesus showed up to Adam and Eve in his shining white form, which to us would be really scary, but they weren't scared of anything. So when Jesus actually showed up from time to time, he was in his transfiguration form, and that is so amazing. And God made the man, God made the man just like Jesus as a solo entity above all the animals and all the plants. And he was clearly smarter and more powerful than everything else in, in creation, but he was alone, and he wanted the man to have a loving partner so he took out the breast of the man and he made the woman. He took out the side of the man and he fashioned the woman. The man came from the man came from the dust, from the dirt. The man was fashioned by God's breath out of the fashioned out of the dirt and then given life by God's breath, but then the woman was formed out of the body of the man. So man came from dirt, woman came from man. Now, that might sound like a crazy, stupid fairy tale to you. It used to be a fairy tale to me. But now I know it's actually real. And in, ter in eternity, when this life is over, all these things are going to be so real to us and so wonderful. So I hope these things help you. Don't be afraid. Do not be afraid of your children looking at porno. But rather, prepare them by saying, okay, when you see pictures and videos of naked people, it's going to be really interesting to look at.
But if you begin to look at them too much, the things of God, our friend, and to know the things of the body, everything works. And the most important thing is caring for orphans and sad women and the poor and to help angry people become kind. All these things, when we're focused on these things, being in honesty and communion, being in honesty and communion, a couple of little families and a bunch of individuals together in a home, caring for orphans, caring for ditched women, caring for the poor, helping angry people become kind, and basically helping people become friends of God. God is our invisible helper. The Holy Spirit is our invisible helper. Jesus said, it's better that I go away. Because if I don't go away, then I won't send the invisible helper like honey over the whole earth. That's the picture he gave me to, to make. Here's the world like that. When Jesus was here, he was standing in one place and everybody had to go to him. But when Jesus went away, back to the, the spirit realm, back to where God is, he could pour the Holy Spirit over the whole earth like honey. So anybody that's opening their hearts up to the Holy Spirit can get all the powers and all the truth of Jesus and be led to other disciples. So the Holy Spirit is now over the whole earth, not just Jesus standing in one place. That's all for now. Thanks for hanging in there. Woo! I hope you took notes and I hope this helps you.